If you were to travel back in time to anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere about 12,000 years ago, it is almost certain that you would come across some variation of proboscidean. These giant mammals were once unbelievably diverse and widespread, being found on nearly every single continent, with gomphotheres in South America, elephants in Africa and Southern Asia, and mammoths and mastodons across the Northern Hemisphere in North America and Eurasia. But around 10,000 years ago, they, alongside other megafauna, all started to die out during an event known as the Late Pleistocene Extinction, with only three species of proboscidean still alive today, the two species of African elephants elephant and the smaller Asian elephant. Today, there are several scientific projects aimed at resurrecting or de-extincting some of these ancient mammals that no longer exist today. One of those mammals has been the talk of decades now, the woolly mammoth, with one project hoping to bring them back within the next decade or so if their research holds up. But as it turns out, we almost didn't need to de-extinct the woolly mammoth because in one little spot of the world, they survived a lot longer than we originally assumed. As it turns out, at the exact same time that the Egyptian pyramids were being constructed, there were mammoths still alive in a place no one knew about. Sadly, even these mammoths ended up dying out, but it wasn't because of human overhunting or climate change. As it turns out, it was their own isolation, which initially saved them from extinction, that spelled out their inevitable doom. The woolly mammoth is, by far, the most iconic animal when discussing prehistoric life and is what a lot of people go to when they think about life from the ancient past. While it is more nuanced than this, they were the arctic elephants thriving in the frozen north with their thick shaggy fur, fat layer, and massive tusks designed for digging down into the snow. Unfortunately, mammoths were one of many animals that went extinct around 10,000 years ago, although there were some small isolated populations that pushed on a little more, but they too slipped away. By around 9,600 years ago, the last of the mammoths had gone extinct on the continental mainlands, likely caused by a combination of climate change and human overhunting. But there were some populations on several islands across the northern hemisphere that continued to push on for quite a while. One such location is St. Paul Island, located in western Alaska in the Bering Sea. St. Paul is a 43 square mile island that hosted a small population of mammoths up until about 5,600 years ago. This population is believed to have gone extinct due to rising sea levels causing an overall drying of their environment, along with a reduction if not complete elimination of fresh water sources. Outside of St. Paul Island and a couple other possible locations, mammoths definitively lived up until about 4,000 years ago on an island called Wrangell in northern Siberia. With a surface area of approximately 2,900 square miles, Wrangell Island is the world's 92nd largest island, and at one point, about 12,000 years ago, was connected to mainland Siberia by a land bridge and ice sheets, which is what allowed mammoths to get to the island in the first place. It's believed that for the most part, mammoths generally didn't go to the island that much, but as the island began to become separated from the mainland due to rising sea levels as the planet warmed, a single herd of mammoths was left trapped on the island with nowhere to go. It was here that mammoths made their final stand against extinction, with a sizable population of several hundred mammoths surviving on the island for 8,000 years after they initially got stranded, lasting for 6,000 years longer than their mainland counterparts. And unlike other Pleistocene megafauna, this population doesn't appear to have gone extinct due to a multitude of factors, including human hunting, as the only campsite dating back to anywhere near that time dates to 300 years after the last island island mammoths died out. It seems as though unlike the mainland where climate change and human overhunting likely caused these extinctions, this population went extinct due to what's known as a genetic meltdown. To put it simply, a genetic meltdown is when a small population is isolated for so long harmful mutations can build up in their genome, leaving the entire population susceptible to easy extinction by outside factors such as disease. And if a population is isolated completely to the point where new genes can't be introduced, the effectiveness of natural selection goes down. 
And this leads to a gradual buildup of harmful mutations in the population's genome, leading to an overall reduced ability to survive in the long term. Eventually, the population becomes unable to produce enough viable offspring fast enough to replace deceased individuals. And in cases where disease is involved, this can lead to a population crash and eventual extinction. The theory that the Wrangell Island population died out due to genetic meltdown is backed up by a study done in 2017, when researchers compared the genome of a single Wrangell Island mammoth to a mainland counterpart that lived about 40,000 years earlier, during a time when mammoths were common across Siberia. By comparing the two individuals, the researchers found clear indication of a genetic meltdown in the island population. The island mammoth's genome had about 20% less genetic variation, which is the difference in DNA between individuals or populations of the same species. The team also found that the island mammoth had multiple instances of DNA deletion. In some cases, entire genetic sequences were just simply missing compared to the mainland counterpart. Finally, the research team discovered an increase in harmful mutations in the island population leading to changes in the DNA instructions of certain proteins. This can cause genes to develop differently or not even present themselves at all in the population. For example, one combination of altered genes likely led to a decrease in olfactory sensors. And they found another set of altered genes that probably changed the number and variety of the mammoth's urinary proteins. The combination of these altered genes probably heavily affected the mammoth's ability to effectively mark and recognize territory, as well as choosing a mate if we assume that mammoths chose mates based on smell like a lot of other modern mammals do. Since mammoths were probably just as social as their modern counterparts, this probably led led to societal chaos in the population. More importantly, the research team uncovered another pair of mutations to the mammoth's FOXQ1 gene. Changes to this gene, which has been studied extensively in rodents like rabbits and mice, would have led to changes in the shaggy coat that mammoths use to stay warm in the wintertime. Mammoth hair is normally long, thick, and hollow, which has two benefits to it. One, it helps to trap air against the body, forming an insulatory heat layer. And two, it helps the animal shed snow really easily. And a healthy FOXQ1 gene allowed the mammoths to stay warm and dry in their frozen environment. But in the island population, the FOXQ1 gene had both a deletion and a frame shift mutation. A frame shift mutation is when a DNA sequence is inserted or deleted by a number of nucleotides that is not a multiple of three. Nucleotides are basically the building blocks of DNA. Now this can cause a change in how the DNA sequence is read, which leads to a different translation of the gene itself. This misreading of the FOXQ1 genome in the island mammoths likely led to multiple changes in the mammoth's coat. Based on what we know from studies of mice with a similar mutation in their FOXQ1 gene, the coats of the mammoths on the island were probably shiny, cream-colored, and translucent. The individual hairs as well would have lacked an inner core, causing the mammoths to lose the ability to insulate properly. Because of all these changes to the gene, the mammoths on the island would have had a lot of problems with retaining heat and shedding snow effectively during the winter months. Another study in 2020 found other changes in the island population, including the NKD1 gene, which likely affected male fertility rates, and the HYSL1 gene, which likely caused developmental defects. Now, it is important to note that all of this information is coming from a single specimen whose remains were well enough preserved for scientists to extract this genetic information in the first place. This means that it's possible that this individual doesn't represent the entire population genetically. However, because of the size of Wrangell Island limiting the number of mammoths that could live on the island at any given time, scientists are fairly certain that it does in fact represent the population pretty well. Sadly, it appears as though these mammoths were doomed to extinction the moment they became isolated on Wrangell Island, simply because of the size of the island itself. Despite Wrangell Island being rather large, it was still only large enough to support approximately 300 or so mammoths at a time due to limited food reserves and space. It's been calculated that, in general, for a species to avoid a loss of genetic diversity, it needs to maintain a minimum population of 500 or so individuals. And for the population to remain safe from genetic mutations that can be harmful, it's got to have a minimum of 1,000 individuals. Now that does vary from species to species, but simply put, Wrangell Island just couldn't support the minimum amount of mammoths required for the population to avoid extinction. Now, despite all of this information, 
a new study released in the summer of 2024 is actually disputing the previous findings. In the years since the previous studies, more mammoths have been unearthed on Wrangell Island, and this new study looked at genome data from 14 island individuals and six mainland counterpart individuals dating back to about 50,000 years ago. Notably for the future, none of this study's island mammoth specimens were from the final 300 years of the population's existence, but since the publication of the study, such remains have been found, and more genomic analyses are planned in the future. Based on the genetics of the mammoths analyzed, the study found that while the population on the island was seeing a decrease in genetic diversity and an accumulation of harmful mutations, the population was actually beginning to slowly purge the most harmful of those mutations simply through the idea that the individuals with the most harmful mutations just didn't last long enough to pass those genes on. All of this suggests that the mammoths were actually maintaining a relatively stable population all the way up until the end. Instead of something like a genetic meltdown causing a gradual decrease in the population, the study suggests that some outside factors such as a disease, possibly brought to the island by birds, caused the mammoths to experience a population crash which led to their ultimate extinction. Regardless of the reason, the extinction of the Wrangell Island mammoths marked the end for the species as a whole. By about 9,600 years ago, mammoths on the mainland continents were completely gone, and it wasn't until the building of the pyramids in Egypt that the last of the mammoths finally slipped away. But it's important for us to do these studies over and over and over again, not just so we can understand how species like the mammoths ended, but for modern animal conservation as well. There are many animals today that are endangered with small isolated populations of low genetic diversity, like cheetahs for example. There are so many factors that go into a species' ability to sustain itself, including habitat space, inbreeding levels, and just the simple ability to get from one population spot to another. And all of these led to the extinction of the Wrangell Island mammoth population, and while it's just simply too late for them, their story can help us understand modern animals and what they need from us to prevent their extinction.